What's up, everyone? Roll call with Karina Nistal, episode 21. I'm here with a good friend of mine, Idalia Rodriguez, and she is truly an inspiration. I had to get her on so that we could talk about her life and some of the things that she's gone through. And um, Idalia, thank you for being here. Thank episode you. 21, I'm so pumped. I've had you on my list for a while. Forever 21, right? <laughs> Forever 21, yes. Um, so Idalia and I met at a job that we both had and we were working on a project. And um, what happened was that we were on a campus that did not have, it was not up to code on ADA compliancy. And so I want to introduce my friend. I want her to tell you a little bit about herself. Where are you from? Where did you grow up? All right. So my family is originally from uh, Reynosa, Tamaulipas. I know that is a border town crossing with the United States that has become very difficult to navigate during the cartel. Um, so my parents moved uh, over here uh, when I was not even born. So I was born over here in Houston, Texas. I'm a Houston, Texas native. So my blood burns barbecue, beer, and the good food. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So um, that's my beginning for my story. And uh, I'm proud to be a Texan. Yes, that's awesome. And you have two sisters, right? I have two siblings that have helped me during my journey of um, ups and downs, going to college, uh, not having a wheelchair that was uh you know, a electronic or mo mm. mobilized wheelchairs. Wow. So they used to, uh, we used to go to San Houston and San Houston has big, big mountains. Yeah. And I still remember telling my sister, you're going to have really good legs after this <laughs> because uh, it was not very accessible yet. We made it work. Oh yeah. They, there, there's a lot of hills out there. Yeah. She had a great legs then. Oh, I'm sure. But what a great sister. So shout out to your sister. Shout out to Brenda. Aw, and um, you know, I'm always amazed by your journey. We talk a lot. You tell me about some of the stuff that you've been through as someone that day in, day out, you're in a wheelchair and sometimes there's not accessibility. I mean, can, can you share with us some of the challenges that you face that other people have to face? Yeah, so I think uh, during, I guess, the journey of being in a chair, I think if we start changing the narrative yes we could change the perspective for future people who are learning more about people with disabilities disabilities cannot just be a chair it could be anywhere right it could be uh neurodiversity yes it could be anywhere with cp it could be pretty much anything but uh, i think a lot of times if we start with the narrative we could change the perspective of the person that being a lot of times i've learned or i've heard people saying even good friends of mine that come with from a good heart saying oh she or idalia or bernice cannot get in the building because she's in a chair mm. so if you listen to that rhetoric it's saying that the person me cannot come to the building because i am in a chair so at a time after time you hear this you're like, am I really the problem or is this systemic system a problem? Yes. And uh, when I hear more like some a statement saying like she cannot come in the building because it's not up to code right. or because it has no elevator, the blame is not on the person but on the property of the owner. Right. So if we start changing those little rhetorics or those little problems, I think we could really move up to better understanding that we need to be more ADA compliant yes. or universal design. Yes. Yes. And, and that was actually how we met and we became friends. I was a union representative and she came over to my booth and she said, you know, is this something that you guys could help me with? I'm on this campus and there's no buttons and there's no, you know, ramps here or there. Like I, I can't reach it. I can't get out. I can't get in. And I was just like, how could this happen? This is a beautiful new campus. And how could it not be up to code? And this is 
only one of so many discriminations that you faced. I admire your courage. Like I'm, I'm a big fan of you. Like I, I admire everything that you go through and that you are still so resilient. You are one of the most resilient people I know. And I just like, I'm always so inspired by you, but like, tell us about some of the things that you've had to go through some of those struggles and feel free to open up as much as you want. If, if it's too, if it's too hard, you don't have to, but just know that you're supported. I see her as a, a spokesperson. I always, I tell her that I tell her, I see you going on tour, doing book signings, you know, like being an inspirational speaker to people that are also dealing with certain disabilities that, you know, there's things that you've surpassed situations that you could help them with, you know, but tell us, tell us a little more about some of the stuff you went through. I know during COVID you had a, a really hard time um, at the hospital as well. Well, I have a condition called SMA, SMA type two. It's spinal muscular atrophy. It's a neuromuscular disease that is genetically inherited. So I was a lucky one on that situation. Uh, it's a rare genetic disease that affects my daily function. So basically I lose protein SMA and that means that it's no longer being regenerated. Uh, so for me to be here, it's a blessing. Yes. First of all, uh, there was no medication for my condition in about six years. In 2016, it became available under the FDA phase three. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's relatively new. You can say that because it's still kind of in the works. There's still some other drugs that are on trial. But if I had to say my uh, biggest milestones as a person in a chair, I would say it would have to be uh, high school. Right. Harvey. Oh, yeah. Working conditions. Mm-hmm. And then daily living. Yes. So in high school, at the moment, we really didn't have what we have a 504 right now. Uh, we had an IDEA that was more of an action plan. Uh, my diagnostician at the moment didn't really believe that my uh, mental capacities were able to surpass a university environment. Wow. So when I was giving my last, this is the last meeting before you graduate, she told me, she was like, Ms. Rodriguez, thank you for being a student here. And there was nothing wrong with my grades. My grades were Maybe not A plus all the way. Well, you're sharp as a knife. But they were not A plus all the way. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, she said, here's two applications, Walmart and Home Depot. Wow. And I really did want to go to college. Of course. Well, college was never offered as an option. So I took about a year off thinking that they were right. Oh maybe goodness. thinking that I was not good enough, thinking that uh, maybe they know something that I don't know. So I started off in a community college. Wow. Taking two classes. I took the two classes. I was like, okay, is that all you got? I was like, come on, bring it on. Wow. And then I started taking more and more and more and yeah. more. Uh, so to find, just to make the story, shorter i ended up with my master's in psychology yes i was just gonna say i was just gonna say i know she's got her master's yes so you proved them all wrong i sent my uh when i graduated from sam houston state university i graduated uh cum laude wow and i sent my diagnostician an invitation and i also sent my uh physical therapist at oh, okay. Were they good the to building? No? no. No. Oh no. Okay. They did not believe that I could do it. Wow. I sent them an invitation. I never heard a response. So if you're looking at this video, thank you for not believing me. Because <laughs> it made it the fire was even stronger. Yes. So uh I made it happen. You did. And High five, my friend. I got my MA. And even when I was graduating with my MA. I had told my school that I was in wheelchair. 
So they almost didn't let me walk just because they did not have a ramp. Are you serious? Didn't think the ramp was adequate enough Wait, for the wheelchair. Were you the only person in your yes. class in the wheelchair? Yes. You were? I was. <gasps> and they couldn't make any... They did. Because I told them that this moment was very important for of me course. and my family. Of course. Because they had taken me, I was work, doing uh, my MA during night school, yeah. five to nine. Wow. So not only was I involving me, but I was also involving their lives in but my it's life. It's true. It's true. And somehow they made it happen. Yeah. And I graduated, shook their hand, uh, Sheila Jackson's hand, actually, by the way. Yeah. And uh, I shook their hand and got my MA. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. And a long line of achievements, truly. Like this, this lady is known for advocating. I feel like God put her on this earth to advocate for, you know, not just yourself, but for all the people that are also dealing with the same issues that you deal with. You know what I mean? And I'm, and I'm always so like in admiration of you and everything that, that you, I know it's, it's painful to have to go through, but I'm in, I'm amazed. I'm amazed by how you surpass everything and everyone. And you are sharp as a knife. I mean, when I talk to her, you know, she has, solutions for everything and and like i'm always your quick-witted humor like it's you know i love our conversations but okay so you said high school college what was the other one workplace Work. that's where we met where we met yes and i know firsthand she had some really gross disgusting discriminations where where you where you were, and um, which she's no longer there. Round of applause. Yes. <laughs> so can you elaborate a little, if you care to, on that? Yeah. Well, uh, the college that I was working for made a new campus on uh, the East Alton location, mm -hmm. and the East Alton location had forgotten to punch out the buttons. Mm -hmm. So. There were cases when I started entering the building and I could not get in or out or go mm. to the restroom or enter anywhere without any assistance. And I had tried to think about solutions, uh, talking to HR, talking to Title IX compliance in regards to how we could address this issue. Yes. Now, there were many, many, many conversations that we had via email in exchange to how we can make this uh, universal design. At the end of the day, uh, I remember seeing Karina and seeing her AFT table. And I had no idea Shout what Shout out to AFT, LSC LSC AFT. <laughs> yes, sir. So I had no idea if she was an enemy or a foe at the moment. <laughs> She's because, like, I'm filling you out. <laughs> because you never really know who you're talking right. to. And at the moment, I was being very cautious and not overstepping any boundaries mm -hmm. because of what society has told us. You know, never go above your supervisor or never go above the, the grain because right. that's what we're taught. Mm -hmm. So I remember talking to this young lady that was beautifully dressed. And <laughs> I was like, hi. I'm like, my name is so-and-so. And she explained what AFT is. And I explained to her my situation. And she's like, give me a minute. So she gave me a minute. We communicated various times uh, with various emails on what we could do. Uh, after several conversations with uh, several members of the union and uh, the company that I was working for, mm -hmm. we came in agreement that the buttons have to be punched out. Damn right they and do. that was not really a me problem because right. I remember the emails that I got said Miss Rodriguez is requesting this for her. Mm. Uh, that narrative still does not stick well on me because I don't think that was a me problem because I'm no longer there. Right. And I'm sure there's other people. Of course. With other conditions that might need that button. 
Right. That without the buttons, they would not be able to enter these barriers. Yes. If it's not staff like you, it's going to be students. Yes. And that's an even bigger lawsuit, which is what we were trying to push as the union. We were saying, hey, you cannot keep delaying this because the longer you delay, the more the chances grow for a student to come. Because, of course, you know, staff faculty yes we're not the priority right. maybe at the moment mm -hmm. but us students are a priority yes so looking back at it, this is perspective as a person not as a staff or not as even just a community member in the community i decided to pursue this in a bigger manner yes and this was with uh miss karina's help yes no that no honestly sh i if not for for your courage to stand up Literally, I know it's a yeah, a stand-up comedian yes. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I know. No, it's not even stand-up comedian, but no, I, we can't stand up. So right, yeah. but if it wasn't for you, I know it's a terrible term, but if it wasn't for you standing up for yourself, advocating for yourself, because we're gonna advocate. We just need the issues being brought to us, and that was there's some things that we could, you know, kind of debate with with like administration but this was not debatable this had to be done it was not up to code and for a building to you know be able to be open to the public open to students open to people and not be up to code is against the law that's just yes hands it is down what it is you know it is it's been yeah. uh, the ADAs were brought up in 1991 mm -hmm. uh, I mean that it's 30 years and above yeah we need something more like 88 2.0 Yes. And uh, even in my heart right now, I still believe that there's a lot of things we could improve with the disability culture. Yes. Just changing the mindset, changing the story, changing yes. the narratives. Yes. For a lot of us. It's not about me. It's about all of us. Everyone. Yes. And and what are what are some of the things that you can suggest to us to be more conscious? Because this this particular podcast is about culture, music, and consciousness. So you're bringing the consciousness to the table. And I want to know, like, what is something that you can advise us or suggest to us to be more conscious towards the disabled and people that are in chairs? Well, I think, first of all, we're just like everybody else. Yes. Uh, we have a drink. Right. We like concerts. We like going right. out. I mean, we're just like everybody else, except we're on a chair. Right. So what you see and what you get is right on the spot. Yes. I'm in a wheelchair, but it doesn't mean the wheelchair has to be. Right. So I think a lot of times when they talk to us, uh -huh. they don't know how to approach us. Right. They feel like, all right, so our mental capacity okay? Are we capable of holding a conversation? Yes. Are we capable of dating? Are we capable of even having all of the a above. smart <laughs> conversation? So it's all yes. of the above. Uh, it's just very simple. Yes. I, I think the beautiful thing is that children understand people with disabilities a lot more than humans. Because mm. I see my knees adapting very wow. quickly. Very quickly to my chair. Wow. She will either raise her table yes. or tell me to go down Aww. so I can talk to her. Or she's like, okay, like she'll make it work. Yes. And that's the thing. Yes. Adapting. Adapting to us talking to us, treating us like we are part of society. Yes. And so so it's pretty much lack of exposure. Lack of exposure. Yes. And I think we're afraid of the unknown. Yeah. A lot of times we're like, well, I don't know about that. So I'm just going to skip it. Mm. So, I mean, it's, it's just even bringing awareness to making room. Like if, if you see someone and, you know, they have a chair or they're disabled and it's you know, clear, evident that you see it, just be conscious enough, be aware enough to let them stand in front of you if you're at a concert or like, you know, different stuff like that, you know, like opening the door or if there's no ramp, like, you know, and you see them struggling to get on the curb, like stuff like that. I think that's, yeah, that's really just, important. Just ask. Yeah, just ask. So Idalia, I love this conversation. I'm so glad you were here. Tell us where we can find you and tell us if you have any shout outs. Well, uh, you can find me either, uh, my legal name is Idalia Bernice Rodriguez, but Facebook Bernice Rodriguez. Uh, also, uh, Gmail, Idalia B, Idalia B Rodriguez. Okay. Gmail. 
Okay. And, and Instagram, I really don't use it, but it's IR92283. Okay. But I'll give Miss uh, Nistal the, <laughs> all my handles yes. so she can figure that out. I'll put them at the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Shout outs? Shout outs to everybody. Kindness is free. Yes. Shout out to your family. I love your mom, your dad. Yes. Shout out to your family, um, the Rodriguez. And um, we love you guys. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.